Buried Treasures brought to you by EB Games. Hey, I'm here at EB Games. I got myself a buried treasure. I'm talking about Critical Depth for the PlayStation 1. Now, the interesting thing about this game is that it was developed by some of the guys that developed Twisted Metal, the first Twisted Metal for the PlayStation 1. This game is very much in keeping with the theme of Twisted Metal. It is a vehicle combat game, but instead of having a bunch of cars racing around on ground and jumping over ramps and all kinds of stuff, we're underwater. Everybody's in a submarine in this one. You've got a collection of a whole bunch of different crazy characters. They've all got their own subs. They're from all over the world. You've got levels that take place in the Baja, the Pacific Rim, the Indian Ocean, Mediterranean Sea, and in the Arctic. So you've got all kinds of interesting sort of background elements to contend with. And you've also got a whole bunch of little power-ups and extra weapons that you can pick up along the way to throw at the baddies in there. Yeah, the pace of the game is a little bit slower than Twisted Metal because obviously you're underwater, but the effects are quite nice, the graphics are pretty cool. I wish they would update a game like this for the new console because I knew that the power of the new machines could handle an underwater experience a little bit better than the PlayStation 1 could, but still, this is worth checking out. It's called Critical Depth for the PlayStation 1. Definitely a buried treasure. All right, we're back, and as you can tell, we have left the Comic-Con floor. We got tired of spending all of our money no, on No, you got tired of spending your money. Yeah, I wanted true. two more days there. You dragged me out of there by my hair practically. I, I had to take a break, but we have something very big to talk about. This one is called Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness. It's developed by Core, published by Eidos. Well, as you know, I'm a huge Laura Croft fan. Yes. I get all the comic books. I got all the statues. I got all the toys. Yes, you do. I uh, love the movie. Yeah. You know... You, you love the movie? Okay, I didn't love the movie. All right. I love Angelina Jolie, though. I, I can respect that. Do you remember where Laura Croft started? Uh, as a... She was a video, video game, game character. That's right, yeah. If they spent a third of the quality... It's really disappointing because you can tell that the idea was good and the concepts were cool and there is a, a game buried in there that could have been a lot of fun to play we you know got word a, a year or two ago that you know we're going to have a new control scene for Laura yes we never liked the original no. Laura Croft controls and, like Resident Evil and they, almost. Yeah, exactly they built it for the first version of Tomb Raider and so, they didn't fix it for every derivative sequel right. that they had so now they finally come across and said hey we're gonna we're gonna give you new control so yes. it's like well great they can't get any worse this is a great thing right they got worse they have this new kind of like hang on mode right when laura kind of is hanging off a, a hanging off a ledge yes you have this second meter that pops up and starts to go down slow i thought that was kind of cool I like it. so yeah so you could only be on certain things because you know it's kind of you like can't hang life. on to stuff forever and that's no. the, that's the thing you do die a lot in this game save every step pretty much. Yes. And then get ready for some really long load times. Now the storyline for the game is a little bit different than previous Tomb Raider games. She's not like an Indiana Jones style adventurer all the way through the game. She gets trailed by cops who think she's murdered somebody and then it's all through dark alleyways and she's got to sneak into buildings and take out guards. Well to me I thought the best part of the game was actually the sound design and, and music. Excellent. You know? yeah. They got a live orchestra. They music is beautiful. In, this in game. London yeah. Symphony Orchestra. They recorded it in Abbey Road where the, the Beatles you know, recorded their albums. And the whole presentation, the front end uh, menu screens and all that stuff are really nice. I love the uh, the cut sequences are great. So I'm going to give Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness, 6 out of 10. I liked it a little more than that. I'm going to give it a 7. On the positive side, the graphics in this game are really well done for the PlayStation 2. The music and sound design for this game is unbelievable. On the negative side, although it looks like they spent a lot of time on the presentation, the control in this game is very, very poor. And although there have been some innovations, the gameplay is still too linear, and you still have to save way too often. Today on Judgment Day, we took a look at Star Wars Galaxies for the PC. This is a massive game with awesome character customization, but there's no vehicles yet, and it costs 15 bucks a month to play. On the GameCube, we looked at Wario World. Tommy and I had a lot of fun with this game. It features a great character and excellent controls, but it's just too short. On the Xbox, we looked at Midtown Madness 3. Great graphics and Xbox Live online play, but you can't hit the pedestrians, which really bummed Tommy out. On the PlayStation 2, we looked at the much-anticipated Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness. This game features an awesome presentation, but it's got major control and camera problems. Very disappointing. In hardware, we looked at the Game Boy Player. This 
device allows you to connect your Game Boy and Game Boy Advance cartridges to the big screen, but you do need a GameCube in order to use it. On the Game Boy Advance, I looked at Samurai Jack, the Amulet of Time. This is a familiar story. Great presentation, but really sloppy controls and collision detection. We have kind of a special treat for you guys today. We actually have some of the Judgment Day forum members here with us. Because Tomb Raider is such a big game, we thought we'd ask them what they thought of it. In one word or less, your time's up, sorry. Go ahead. Great sound, less jigglage. Let's give it a 6.5. How about you? I find it very frustrating, constantly starting everything over again because you're constantly falling off of ledges. I give it about a 6. Don Bubbles. It went from an intense action game to a precise platformer, 5.5. Face Stabber. Well, the uh, action just wasn't there. It was pretty classic compared to the old one, so I give it a 3-ish. For a game that had been pushed back twice already, had very lousy controls, not impressed overall, 6.5 out of 10. So there you have it. Uh, everyone says I give low scores, but uh, these guys uh, score lower than me. And so that puts Tomb Raider, I think, right in the rental category. That's all the time we have for you guys today. We're going to see you guys next time on Judgment Day. Thanks for watching. Therefore, it's wireless. That's right. Now you can't... Unlike this microphone... The mic's got a wire on that it. That is not wireless. My watch, however, is wireless. Now you... Vic's head is, got is actually has wires in it, which is the crazy thing. Now, you almost touched my 